Hello. Welcome back. <laughs> Some of you may have watched this twice already, but to be fair, you've watched it first without the images and the second time without any sound. Now, I did have six people watching it without any sound, so you must have thought, hmm, lovely, can't hear you. Hopefully you can hear me now. Um, I want to, um, as you can hear, as you can see, sorry, welcome back to um, my Facebook page, the Critical Care Practitioner Facebook page. Um, these are called the COVID Chronicles. So as you can see, might be a little bit cheesy, but that's what I'm going with. Um, is it a bit cheesy? Maybe, maybe it is. Anyway, I've been at work today and uh, I had to go to work because I had to sort out my non-medical prescribing rights. And it's a bit of a chore. We have to fill in paperwork, even though, you know, I'm registered with my professional body as being a non-medical prescriber. We have to fill in all kinds of paperwork, which is a bit frustrating. But I had to wait for somebody to sign something. And while I was waiting, um, I was looking at Twitter. Now, for those of you that don't actually use Twitter, you should. Um, it's a fabulous resource. It's full of crap as well. But so is all social media. You've just got to learn to filter that crap. Um, the good stuff is there um, and it can be a very, very useful resource. So let me show you what I looked at. So if I go across to Twitter first to my notifications and then show you the screen and make sure I do the transition because I didn't do that in the first video. I've remembered it. You can hear me. You can see the transition. Yes. Excellent. OK, so the first thing I noticed uh, was this post here, which is by a website called Continuous. Now, this is run by Owen. Owen, I managed to meet over. He's a doctor, um, an Irish doctor. I met him uh, at the BACCN conference last year, uh, and he is his uh, what he's trying to do is produce lectures online for people to access on a weekly basis and he gets speakers from all around the world uh, to come and speak you can watch them live or you can get them recorded um, he does charge for this service um, but um, he also um, produces a lot of them as free podcasts so if you don't want to pay for the service um, and it is a good service but if you don't want to pay for the service then you can go to iTunes or any podcast catcher and get the podcasts and get get the free lecture you obviously don't benefit from the sl from the slides um, but to be honest with you a lot of information doesn't actually necessarily need the slides anyway so that's one thing you could go to but but what he has done um, he's he has produced what he's calling the COVID-19 free lectures so he does want you to uh, register for these uh, to keep the platform for health professionals only and to create certificates so you can get CPD out of this as well um, and it, you know, to be fair, it will add to his uh, database as well. But um, you're not paying for anything at this stage. And we've got some fabulous lectures here for to watch as a consequence. So the two that caught my eye, particularly of interest, bearing in mind the kind of patients that we're going to be getting in ITU, is uh, you can see the second one here. So um, hang on there. You see this one here, the foundational aspects of mechanical ventilation with Eugene Mondor. Eugene um, is uh, an American. I met him in Orlando last year when I went to the American Association of Critical Care Nurses Conference in Orlando. That's such a mouthful every time I say it. Um, but he's a lovely chap. I interviewed him. He's on one of my podcasts, um, interviewed him. Really nice guy. Good presenter, uh, breaks the information down well. So that's one well worth going to watch. And that's one I'm going to go and watch as well. I have heard the podcast, but it would be useful to hear it um, with the slides as well. The other one that caught my eye is this one down here. So ARDS patients surviving and thriving early application of the evidence matters with Kathleen Volman, also very well respected around the world. Um, and from my experience already, I picked a patient up only a couple of days ago who ended up uh, being prone um, because of the condition of his lungs. And it looked very ARDS like the conditions of those lungs. So full of lots of fluid, bilateral fluffy opacities on 100 percent oxygen, et cetera, et cetera. So these are free. You'll need to register, but they're still free. And I think that's well worth it. So then um, I found... Uh, where do we go to next? Oh, yes. So we then went to hey, this one here. So this is by the guys over at Glenfield. Now, Glenfield is a hospital in the Midlands here in the UK, uh, which does a lot of ECMO. It's a big cardiothoracic centre. Um, and they've worked with basically the um, 
Faculty of Intensive Care Medicine, the Intensive Care Society, the Association of Anaesthetists and the Royal College of Anaesthetists to produce a video, um, a simulated um, intubation for a patient with um, the coronavirus. So we've got, for example, we've got the um, uh, checklist here, COVID-19 intubation checklist. I'm sure you've probably, a lot of you have already got a checklist. If you haven't, this is a good one to have with you. It's one sheet. It's simple, um, which it probably needs to be because by the time you've got all your PPE on, um, a lot of time may have passed and you need to move on, but you need to do it safely. You've got the things that might need to be in your uh, your bag that you're going to be carrying around with you that you're going to take into this COVID patient. And then finally, you've got a lock zip as well. So all of those are available on this site for you to download as you wish. Uh, but the key part for me um, is this video. So if I just skip on, this is on YouTube as well, so free to access. But if you go to this page, all these links, um, I've linked to this post, by the way. So hopefully all those links will work. Um, but if you go to the... Um, the link you can watch the video here uh, and you can see um, not only is it very clear and crisp um, and uh, a good looking video you've also got the titles underneath so if you are going to have to watch it in an environment where you can't necessarily hear it or you can't get the sound up loud enough because maybe you're in the middle of intensive care and it's the night shift or whether whatever um, you do get the titles there let me just go back so you can see they're nice and clear there um, so that's another free resource so if you want to see how intubation um, can be done and can be done safely then that's a fabulous resource as well for you and then finally I went to this one here so this is the British Association of Critical Care Nurses have also produced a nurse educational resource centre COVID-19 nurse educational resource centre and as I say again the links are I think they're going to be down below not sure they'll be underneath me um, the link should be there or, or above me whatever the links are in there anyway but this is um, a resource center where they're, where they're gathering um, things together for us to go and look at and um, the thing that actually caught my eye was the um, online BACCN espresso virtual education session gosh that's another mouthful isn't it uh, and the first one they've done is preparing to prone and this session is designed for everybody who may be required to support critical care nurses now, I know again from experience that um, we are likely to be proning a lot of these patients. And research has shown that uh, when patients are proned, if they're done with experienced teams, the outcomes are better than if done with inexperienced teams. Um, so it's important that um, we are going to learn how to prone properly, learn how to prone safely. Um, and eventually, because we're going to be doing a lot of it, we'll become very experienced at it. But in the early stages, not so much. Now, there is... Um, there is a uh, potential in, in my hospital, for example, where we're actually going to use a lot of the stuff that aren't ITU trained and we're going to train them to be almost a proning team. So they're just going to go around with the expert at the head end um, working as a team to help us prone our patients, which I think is a great idea. Bearing in mind, these guys are going to be prone for 16 hours, then eight hours on their back and then possibly 16 hours again. If you have six, seven, eight of these in your unit that need proning, then it's very, very uh, resource intensive. And if we can get a team that can help us do that, then all the better. So this session uh, was uh, live at 4 p.m. this afternoon. I missed it, unfortunately, but it does say that it's going to be accessible via the website. It's not there yet. I've had a look, uh, but hopefully it'll be up there soon. Um, and uh, perhaps anyone from the BACCN could let us know when it's actually there. I'm sure they will via Twitter. So back to my final point is that um, if you are not on Twitter, then really... Um, I think you're doing yourself a bit of a disservice if you want to keep up to date with things. People often say to me, OK, who should I follow on Twitter? Well, for me, the answer is slightly different. It's not who you should follow. It's what you should follow. So for, to, for now, for example, what you should be following is the hashtag COVID-19. If you go onto Twitter and go into the search bar. So uh, let's I'll show you here. So if you go into search Twitter um, and then you would just type in hashtag covid uh, and it even comes up there for you. It fills it in for you, COVID-19. Um, that will then give you all the recent tweets about COVID-19. A lot of them aren't medical, but a lot of them are. And once you find the medical ones, once you narrow it down, you can then follow those people um, 
and um, they will start hopefully to produce a lot of information or follow me at CC practitioner if you follow at C if you follow me I'm tweeting out a lot of COVID stuff uh, you can see a lot of the people that I follow um, and then you can work out who you need to follow and go and follow those so go and use Twitter anyway so that's me done for today um, I hope um, you've enjoyed the COVID chronicles cheesy or not um, and hopefully I'll be able to produce some more stay safe stay well we will get through this and i look forward to speaking to you again soon <laughs>